but still expecting this bigger move to the upside. And you're right on Bitcoin, right? So initially I was I was a 20,000 target when we were at 65,000. I have lowered that now, at, even though I expect a short-term bounce here. So it's going to be tough, right? I mean, there's no doubt about it that gold has been struggling, but but I think we also have to put it in perspective. So let me just show my chart. And number one is gold's come right back to this longer term trend. So we're right there, right around that 1760 level on gold right now. And I think the key about this is just understanding that, you know, you were just mentioning how, how we're seeing the dollar at 20 year highs, right? I mean, 20 year highs on the dollar. The dollar today is just screaming to the upside. Now, you could counter that with saying, well, why don't we see gold at 20-year lows? I mean, that would make somewhat of, of common sense if, if we see a 20-year high on the dollar. And this is a chart of the dollar, folks, and it's just an incredible move today. Here's your daily candle right here. We can obviously see just since the beginning of the year what a massive move up right from here on the dollar. So what I would just say is that I remain extremely bullish on gold, mainly because the dollar has been crushing it, ripping higher. And gold, yes, it's pulled back, but it hasn't pulled back a ton. We're still basically flat on the year. So just considering that to me, that is a major, major kind of bullish signal on gold. Even though it hasn't been sexy, it hasn't performed amazingly well, at least you could say almost it's holding its own. So would the turn on gold and your expectation be when uh, the Fed turns uh, dovish again? Yeah, I think I think as soon as the dollar starts to starts to weaken again considerably, meaning that it's not just one down day on the dollar, but we start to see that pullback retrace of this big, big move up. And I think you're right. I think that coincides with some Fed speak, maybe the next comments from the Federal Reserve later this month. Um, and then obviously, as soon as we start to see more of a dovish Fed talking about maybe stopping the interest rate hikes, I think that's part of it as well. And I think it, the understated part also of, about gold here is one of the reasons why it's holding up is that you are getting kind of that fear of recession out there. So there's some fear out there, which again is keeping, and again, you look at the chart of gold here and you're like, wait, it's not holding up. But in reality, it kind of is. Again, if you look at where it's been, like even going back just to 2020, mid 2020, over a year ago, it's basically flat. And again, if you look at the dollar, the DXY, I mean, this is just an incredible move, right? Even since early 2020, or this is when gold, by the way, was at that last price. Look at the dollar and then think about where gold is still hovering at that same level. So those to me are, are big things, even though it doesn't reflect in the price yet. You pay attention to these underlying factors. Yeah. So, you know, it's more a matter of, of looking at the chart and being realistic. Right. So so one of the things I always say is every day there's a new candle that forms on the chart, basically the price action for that day. It's, it's a new piece of the puzzle. So my job as a technician is to go back to my number crunching and figure out is the probability of that price target still as high as it was. And I think the honest truth is at this point, we have about six months left in the year. We'd have to make a pretty substantial move up. So my guess is I, I'd lower that price target or expectation to just maybe that double top, maybe just above that double top, but still expecting this bigger move to the upside. And you're right on Bitcoin, right? So initially I was I was a 20,000 target when we were at 65,000. I have lowered that now, at, even though I expect a short term bounce here, I do think we're probably headed to 12,000, maybe even below. This is an incredible, incredible drop in some of these commodities. Let's bring up the chart here and take a look. So here's your, your copper chart, and you're actually getting close to a very, very important support level right here. So if we look at this line here, this is around that six. This is the copper futures, by the way. So you're looking at around 629, 630 on that chart right there of the copper futures. That's getting very close. I would expect a very nice bounce off of that level. I don't know if it will be a longer term low pivot. My guess is you could actually go lower if we do slide into a big recession. But at least for a, for a near term swing trade, this is an amazingly attractive level for a high reward bounce. Yeah, the uranium ETF, you know, you have to you have to be aware that, you know, it looks short term, just like the energy markets to have topped. There was a trend line right here. We are below it at this point. I would be looking for this area right here as your next big support on the URNM, which is around 4815 or so. So we're not that far away, but that should give us a lot of near term support. I would say that, again, same kind of thing is with with copper, is that if the economy really does backslide and, and energy prices come down dramatically, 
league, which I am in the camp that that's going to happen with oil, then I do think we could go as low as here um, on the URNM, which is around 3375. Um, but again, swing trade bounce here, this would probably be that longer term accumulation zone where I think you get a major bottom in the uranium uh, ETF. I covered at this line, we shorted again right here, and then I covered right here because I didn't know if it would break down, so I'm missing out on this collapse here. I do have Exxon Mobil short, which I'm in the money nicely on, and I'm kind of holding that one. But again, I, you know, unfortunately, I didn't necessarily think we were going to break down that quickly. Like this, I mean, this drop on oil is a massive drop today. It's awesome for us as consumers to see oil below that hundred dollar level. Let's hope it stays there, and let's hope those gas prices come down quickly. Yeah, so so I'm in that camp. I think I think you're starting to hit some big support right here. You can see these pivots right along here. So nineteen dollars, eighteen seventy five, and then he's right. I mean, once you get into this area back here, which is right around that eighteen level, right down here, there's a ton of support. So actually, what I'm, I've started to do is. Basically, at this level, at, at just below 19, I started to accumulate some silver. And then what I'll do is I'll continue buying all the way down to about 18, 17, 95. But I think, again, silver is oversold here. If it can flush a little bit more, even more attractive for a near-term bounce. I don't, I don't on, a, on, a, on a chart basis, but what I do do is I absolutely pay attention. And what you can see here is the GDX has been getting crushed, right? So way, way more than gold. And just thinking about it on a macro perspective, it makes a lot of sense, right? Because, you know, gold is the pure play where you have inflation, fear trade, but the miners have all these input costs. They have to buy machinery, they have to buy chemicals. All of these are inflationary things and it's costing them more. So it's almost as if, because their costs have gone up, it's almost as if the price of gold has artificially been lowered for them because their costs are offsetting that, that price of gold. So it does make sense that they have dropped substantially. Um, having said that, there's a lot of support getting real close right in here. So again, 25, 65 on the GDX, that looks really attractive for a swing trade. I honestly don't think for, for a long time, it's hard to know the time frame, but we're not talking you know, a few years here, folks. I, I'm concerned that this inflation is gonna be around for a longer period of time. Five I think to seven get, years, Gareth, five yeah, to seven years? Yeah, I would say five plus years, maybe even beyond that. Because, and again, think about it like this. We pulled forward 20 years of sub 2% inflation. It's almost like it's time to pay the piper, as they say, right? Where now we have to have that period that's that's a longer stretch above that 2%. So I don't know if it's going to be 4 or 5%, but that's my guess is somewhere in that 4 to 5% level is where we're going to be stuck for many years. And the problem with that is you're going to get into a recession and have what's called stagflation. And stagflation is the worst of all because people aren't making more money but inflation is going up versus, you know, you could arguably say that recently people have been able to make a better wage, wages have been going up. So it's kind of offsetting with inflation. But if you get into stagflation, that's kind of the worst of all.